I have the best and the least best from the Vanity Fair 2024 Oscars After Party. We got a lot of looks to go through, so let's go. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adrienne Kieser and I'm your over 50s fashion diva. Here on my channel, we talk about fashion, beauty, lifestyle, travel, and anything trending in social media and any of those topics. So if you want to stay relevant over 50, you've come to the right place. But before I get started, I would like to apologize for this video going up so late. I am a solo content creator. I do everything myself, the filming, the editing, posting, social media, everything on my own. So sometimes my videos will go up a little bit later than I would like. Also, the Oscars and Vanity Fair parties come right at the end of Fashion Month. So I was a little conflicted. Should I finish my Fashion Month video? Should I do the Oscars videos? Oh my goodness, I got my Milan video done. I still have to do Paris, but I said I need to stop and go ahead and do my Vanity Fair and Oscar videos and get those up since it's already so far after the event. I'm going to be doing this a la Joan Rivers Fashion Police style. Remember Joan Rivers and Fashion Police? I was obsessed with that show. Anyway, that's the way I'm going to do it. I've broken up the celebrities into different categories and I'm going to be giving you my best and least best in each of those categories. So let's get started. Being here in Belize, it's not so easy to get access to all of the media, but I was able to watch the Vanity Fair after party, the red carpet, red carpet and that was hosted with Tan France and Michelle Buteau. And I wanna start off with their looks. Michelle Buteau is in Giovanni, and I thought that she looked very lovely, very relaxed, very easy. I think this was her first red carpet hosting event. So I thought she did a really good job with it. It was very simple. And I do recall at some point throughout the broadcast, she mentioned that she was wearing cowboy boots under this lovely little black number. It's a, you know, very simple design. I loved her hair and makeup. I thought that looked fabulous. And yeah, I just thought she looked very lovely. Now we're gonna move over to Tan France. And this is by Taylor Cooperative, but I do recall that during the broadcast, he stated that he actually designed this piece and Taylor, Taylor Cooperative created it for him. I really have nothing negative to say about this look. I think that the jacket fits amazingly. It has sort of a nod to his Indian heritage with sort of the train coming off the back of the jacket. The pants are sleek. The shoes are amazing. I'm not sure. I think that they look like Gucci shoes, uh, you know, a light, nice high patent leather. It looks like a, maybe a boot. The jewelry is simple. And yeah, overall, I think it's a really good look. Now that the hosts are out of the way, we're going to start with our first category. Now, the way I'm going to be doing this is sort of counting it down to my favorite and then also my least favorite. Does that make sense? I hope so. If it doesn't, it will as we go along. Number five, Tom Ford in Tom Ford. Now he looks absolutely amazing in this look. He is a legendary designer, so naturally the cut is going to be impeccable. He just looks like Italian sexiness. I absolutely love the jewel buttons. The bow tie is perfect. He's wearing the little uh, flower in the buttonhole as well as a pocket square, which you think would be all too much, but somehow he makes it work. What I found funny was that, you know, for the photos he's got on these really amazing sunglasses, 
but then he's also carrying his regular glasses in his hand. I thought that was funny. I love the shoe. It's a nice shiny patent leather shoe. It looks impeccable with the look. And I think he just overall looks sexy as hell. And it, that's why he made it my number five. My number four is Matt Bomer and he's in custom Brunello Cuccinelli. And he made it to number four because he looks so sexy in this look. I do love a traditional sort of a look on the red carpet for menswear. Not always, sometimes I would like to mix it up, but I, I do love a traditional look and anything that's a little slightly off from traditional and he fit the bill in this stunning white coat with the tuxedo shirt. I love the bow tie. It's a nice shiny black uh, against the shiny lapel of the jacket. It fits him impeccably. I love the watch, looks amazing. The cut of the pants is perfection. Also the shoe, he went with a patent shoe, a little lace up shoe here. I think it looks amazing. His hair looks stunning. I mean, he just looks like an old Hollywood legend. I absolutely love this look and that's why it was my number four. My number three favorite men's look was James Marsden in Dunhill and he's got on David Yerman jewelry. This look is just sexy. I mean, I just love James Marsden, so I might be a little bit biased, but here I think he just looks amazing. Again, a nice traditional suit. The waistcoat is what did it for me. That was what put it over the top. Also, I believe he's wearing some crystal buttons on his shirt. Nice, simple tuxedo shirt. I love the size of the bow tie. I think it works here and also the cut of the pants, perfection. I think they are perfectly cut. I love the little shoe he's wearing. It looks like it might be a little patent loafer. Love that. And also that David Yerman pen. I mean, stunning, stunning. He just looks stunning. I have nothing negative to say. That's why he was my number three. I know this is gonna be a little bit of a shock, but my number two is Coleman Domingo. I know, you're probably like, what? Why is he not number one? And you'll see why, I just have my own personal preference. But Coleman made number two because I loved him in this Balmain. And he's got on De Beers jewelry. The coat, I mean, that's the whole look, right? I mean, it's absolutely stunning. I'm gonna put up a picture of what it looked like coming down the runway, because it's not as easy to see what it looked like on the red carpet. And fortunately, I saw it when it was, uh, you know, moving. He actually went and did an interview with Tana Michelle and it, I fell over when I saw this coat. I was like, oh my God, it's the Balmain coat. And he just killed it. I mean, head to toe, look at the jewelry, look at the face. I mean, that's just a stunning face. I love the burnout. Uh, shirt underneath it just says a little hint of sexiness right and I mean look at this coat it, it's all about the coat it, it's all about this coat it fits him to perfection I love the pants I mean it's Balmain you know it's my favorite it's Balmain and also the shoes I love another again another patent shoe the beers jewelry also you know he's done so much jewelry on the red carpet when you're wearing a coat that ornate you know pulled back on the jewelry i love that and i'm gonna say he has killed it every red carpet this season and he finished this strong i mean i fell in love and that's why he is my number two you're like adrian who could possibly top coleman in that stunning Balmain coat and hear me out you may not agree but this is you know this is my channel <laughs> and this is my number one favorite in the men's category and that's gonna be Chris Evans what yes look at him in this Dolce & Gabbana he's got on an ICW watch and Santoni shoes I just absolutely loved it I mean it does blend in with the background, but it still stands out, right? I think he looks so stunning. It's cut to perfection. I love the red on his skin tone. 
you know, a very simple tie and shirt underneath. And I, I mean, look at the cut of the jacket. Look at that cut. I mean, you know, the little the crossover in the front. I mean, it's, look at it. I, I just can't, I just could not resist this being my number one pick. The pants, I love a pool on a pant. And here it's like skinny with a slight pull. I love that. I think it looks so amazing. The shoes, once again, a stunning patent leather. The watch, I mean, look at this face. He just looks like I am ready to continue to be a leading man in a lot of movies. I absolutely also loved the way his wife looks. Let me pull up that picture. I don't know this actress. I guess she's kind of a big deal. Alba Baptiste. Maybe she's a big deal. I don't know. But I thought she also looked absolutely stunning. I can't remember what it was that she was wearing. Or who she's wearing. But I loved it. I love the jewelry. She looks very simple. Very classic. She looks perfect with him. They're a perfect couple. Love, love, love this. I, I love this for them. I love this for him. And now, I mean, maybe... I'm wrong, but I just thought that Chris Evans stole it in my book. Loved it. He's my number one favorite. Don't come for me in the comments, please. This is just going to be a brief shout out to, and I'm sorry if I'm butchering this name, Nisuti Gatwa, and he's in Cameron Cancock Breastplate with the Wayungami Trousers, Tiffany & Company Jewelry, and Christian Louboutin Shoes. Now this was a look I was on the fence about. I just threw it in there because I just thought it was something that was unique and you don't really see on the red carpet. I do think that he pulls it off. I don't know that I love the look. I don't know that I hate the look. It was kind of an in-between for me, but I did just want to throw it up there really quickly. Now on to my least favorite looks. And we're going to start off with Donald Glover. And I know everyone is going to be like, what? I loved his look. It just wasn't for me. Now he's wearing a Miri. He's got on Boucheron jewelry and a Vacheron Constantine watch. And I just thought it was too much. Like I know I was talking about Tom Ford had a lot going on. But here it just all looks like it's a little too much. Like with the open shirt, with the mesh shirt, and then the jacket, and the pocket square, and the jewelry, and the pleated pants, and then the black and white shoes. It, it just all looked like it was all too much. Like I got where he was going with it. And he is a very handsome man. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he does look very handsome. But I just felt that it all just looked like a little too much. Like maybe if he had paired back and just buttoned the shirt as opposed to having it open maybe even without the tie whatever just maybe if he had buttoned up the shirt and we saw the jewelry that might have worked for me but I just felt like with the open shirt it just all felt like it was a little too much but he is a handsome guy but he is number four of my least favorite looks. my number three least favorite look was Jason Bateman and Jason Bateman is wearing Dolce & Gabbana both him as well as his wife, Amanda Anka, I believe you pronounce her name. And, you know, I love Jason Bateman. He can really do no wrong as far as his acting. But this look was just caveman cometh. It just didn't have any appeal as far as the look goes. It's like, okay, let me just throw on a suit and go to this event. It didn't look like there was any effort into it. His hair looks a mess. He's looking really old and scruffy in this photo. It just kind of looks messy. You know what I mean? I, and especially next to her, she looks so stunning. And you know, I just thought it was a mismatched pair. It just really isn't my favorite look. I've seen him look much better on the red carpet. I do like the shoes. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> but that is why he is my number three least favorite. My number two least favorite in the men's category is Jeremy O'Harris. Now, I could not find out who he was wearing, but yeah, I had to talk about it. For me, it's a unique take. I kind of get where he was going with it. He wanted to sort of stand out. I just didn't think it worked here. You know what I mean? I think that the collar on the shirt looks too big. 
The bow tie looks all right. I'm not mad at that. But like the collar just looks too big and then it looks too small in the waist because you can see the shit. You know what I mean? I don't know if that was intentional, but I know that the collar being too big is not intentional. I do love the beading on the lapels. That was probably my favorite thing about this look. You know, he was trying to do something different with the, you know, high rise on the pants and the little loafer shoe. I just didn't think that it worked. Also, you know, his hair, I could have... I could have whipped up a better style on a Sunday than that. But that's my opinion. It just isn't my favorite look. And I, yeah, I, I just didn't like it. <laughs> and that's why he was my number two least favorite in the men's category. My least favorite, and I was really on the fence with this one if it really was my least favorite. I was kind of going back and forth, back and forth. And I'm gonna go with Jeremy Pope as my least favorite in this Ferrari look. I, I don't know, it's just, it's, again, it's all too much. I think that, you know, the shiny fabric and then the crinkle and then it's big on the pants and the cut of the pants is wonky and weird. I, I, it's not a look that I enjoy. And I can't remember, I think that this just recently walked in Paris Fashion Week. And so I think that that was probably why he went with it just doesn't look like it fits him well. You know, maybe I'm wrong. Leave me a comment and let me know. You guys probably love this look. And I think it was really just the shiny fabric that was kind of throwing me and the pants. That That's really where I was going with it. Maybe a matte shoe would have looked better and, and a, maybe a shirt underneath. I don't know, something about it, it was just all wrong for me. It just was not working and I just, couldn't get past that. So that is why he's my number one least favorite in the men's category. My next category I'm calling my ingenues. But a lot of these ladies have been around the block for a little bit and have graced many a red carpet. I just thought they were kind of new to the Oscars Vanity Fair kind of situation so I included them as well. But let's get started. My number six favorite look in the ingenue category was Cardi B, and she's wearing archival Atelier Versace. I thought she just looked absolutely stunning in this look. She is serving on the red carpet. It fits her body like a glove. I love the beaded neckline. I love how it accentuates her breast going up like that. Oh, she just looks so stunning. She kept the makeup very simple. The hair looks amazing. It, like I said, it's fitting her curves like it was made for her. <laughs> and this is an archival piece, so clearly it was not made for her, but she is wearing it. I'm in love. The lace going down the leg, the beading, the train. I, I wish I could see the shoe. I can't see the shoe, oh, but it's just stunning. I am absolutely in love with this look. She didn't need any extra jewelry, which I love that she didn't go over the top. She clearly knows what she's doing on the carpet. She knows herself. She looks amazing. And that's why she's my number six favorite in the ingenue category. Number five is Vanessa Hudgens. And I did get to see her live on the red carpet of the Oscars. She did an amazing job. And here at the Vanity Fair, I mean, Wowza. Oh, and by the way, she is wearing custom Alberta Ferretti. And she just looks, oh, like a dream. I absolutely love this look. The makeup is makeuping. The jewelry is jewelrying. And I mean, her breasts look amazing. She's pregnant, obviously. I am loving that hair. It is fitting her body like perfection. I love the off the shoulder with the slight sweetheart right there at the breast. I absolutely love the sheerness of it. You can see her little belly jewelry going into the little briefs, all accentuating her bum. I love the nails even look amazing. I wish I could see more of the shoes, but it's clearly that it's sheer all the way down. I just love this sort of cape effect. I, I just love this look. She just looked absolutely amazing, both at the Oscars and at the Vanity Fair party. She killed this look 
stunning, stunning, stunning. And that's why she's my number five. My number four in the ingenue category is Quinta Brunson. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And she's wearing Mark Bauer and Santoni shoes. Oh, look at this look. Look at this look. It's absolutely stunning on her. The way that it's fitted to her body. I mean, it's like a glove. She is snatched in that look, okay? I love this vine pattern laciness of the dress. I love the one shoulder off the shoulder with the neckline is amazing. Her breasts look incredible. And it's just the slit, it, the train, it's just stunning. Now the shoes, I guess, you know, a simple strap was probably the way to go. Maybe I would have liked a little more there. I think the jewelry is beautiful. Her makeup is very simple. The hair, the Veronica Wake Lake, the Veronica Lake waves. She just looks beautiful. Her face looks stunning and radiant. I love the simple hoops. And then she's got the rings. I love this look. I absolutely love it. She looks incredible. That's why she's my number four. My number three favorite look in the ingenue category is Jodie Turner Smith in Gucci and Pascal Brunei jewelry. I actually saw her walk in on the red carpet because she was interviewed by Michelle and Tan. Do I have to say anything? Look at it. Look at it. Do I have to say anything? She is killing this look. Killing it. I mean, look at the body. Look at this woman's body. That and and the and the dress is just highlighting all the assets. It's a simple dress. Why is it up there in the number three? Look at it. Look at how this dress is accentuating every single muscle in her body. That slit all the way up to her vocal cords. I mean, it's just killing me. The shoes were stunning. The jewelry is simple and perfect. Look at the hair. The finger waves on the platinum blonde. I mean, oh, I was obsessed with it when I, she came out onto the red carpet. I mean, I just couldn't stop looking at her. I just was like, goals. Goals, goals, goals. <laughs> I mean, the chocolateness of her skin. I mean, oh my God. I, I just couldn't stop looking at it. I just couldn't. And that's why she's my number three. Absolutely stunning. My number two favorite look in the ingenue category was Emma Chamberlain. And she's wearing Tom Brown with Cartier jewelry. Now, if you know, you know, Tom Brown is one of my favorite New York designers. So I was a little bit biased when I saw the look. She also was interviewed by Tana Michelle, and I just loved it. I just thought she looked so stunning in this look. I mean, it was defying gravity <laughs> by the way it was cut, but look at how amazing she looks in it. I, when you saw her move in it, it was just a dream. I love this take on a tuxedo kind of a look with the open shirt. Look at her makeup. That's makeuping. That makeup is makeuping. She kept the hair slicked back. It looks amazing. I love the jewelry, the earrings. Oh my gosh, she just looks incredible. She's got her little nose ring. I love it. I love the necklace. I mean, that cummerbund is so smashed. I don't even know how she was breathing in that thing. And then it falls into this stunning black ball gown with the train skirt. And I mean, it's a Tom Brown. So of course, I'm gonna absolutely love it. Even the bag, even the bag was a Tom Brown. It was like the crocodile sort of briefcase bag. Oh, it was, I, I love this look. I mean, she just looks incredible. I couldn't stop staring at it. And that's why she's my number two in the ingenue category. My number one favorite look in the ingenue category is Hal Bailey in Off-White. I loved this look. I mean, first of all, let's just start with her face. How beautiful is this woman? This is like a natural makeup. It just looks absolutely amazing. She's allowing the dress to do the work. She doesn't need anything extra on her face. I love the hair. I think it works perfectly with the dress. 
the jewelry, the earrings, absolutely beautiful. Then look at this high neck, long sleeve with all the vine pattern lace. It's just hugging her body. I love how it goes down and it has a signature white stripe, very off-white. Nails even are natural and simple. She's really letting the dress shine here. And what I love about it is, even though it fits her perfectly, she still looks like she's got a little room to breathe in it. You know, she's not so snatched in it that, you know, she can't breathe. She just looks relaxed and easy and stunning. I loved this look. It was hands down my favorite. And I think that the reason was really mostly about her face. I mean, she's just a stunning, stunning woman. Love, love, loved it. That's why she was my number one. I did want to make a quick mention of Kendall Jenner and the Mazel Margiela Artisanal Haute Couture piece. She does look stunning in it. It's a beautiful piece. I'm just trying not to give any Kardashian Jenner energy here on my channel, but I did have to make mention of it because it is a beautiful dress and she does look amazing. My number four least favorite in the ingenue category is Dominique Fishback in Bak Mai. I'm gonna start with the positives. I think her hair is stunning. She has a beautiful face. Again, a lot of natural makeup on the red carpet, which I love. I did like the hoops. I don't know that it necessarily worked with the look. First of all, I just didn't like this dress. It just isn't one of my favorites. I don't think that it's flattering on her. I don't think it fits her well. If you kind of look around sort of the bodice area, it just looks all very big on the sides. I just didn't like it. And then it falls into this taffeta sort of bell shape. It's, you know, uh, low waisted with pockets. And I'm assuming that the top is a velvet. I'm hoping that that's a velvet because that just sort of would make sense. But I can't quite tell in the photo. The taffeta skirt is okay. I just didn't like the fit of it. That's really why she made it on the least favorite. The shoe's okay. And like I said, she's a stunning girl. I just don't think it fit her well. That was really what my biggest issue was with the look. And that's why she was my number four. My number three least favorite look was Emily Ratajkowski in the Jacquemus piece. Now, this design did just show at Paris Fashion Week just a couple of weeks ago. And when it came down the catwalk, I didn't really like it. And if you look at the photo, women's breasts don't sit like that. You know what I mean? They don't sit up like that. And so the fact that her breasts are kind of sitting down and the breastplate is sitting in a different spot, I just didn't like it. It was the same on the catwalk. I just didn't like it. Now, I don't recall if there was a train piece on the catwalk because look, I covered over a hundred collections so I don't remember if there was a train piece, but I don't really care for it here. What I do love is that she looks stunning. Her makeup is flawless. I mean, that is makeup makeuping right there. And I do love her hair, but just the rest of the look, it's just not my favorite. I wasn't a fan of this look on the runway and I certainly don't like it here on such an stunning gorgeous girl with an amazing body. I think she could have done better and that's why she's my number three. My number two least favorite look in the ingenue category was Ice Spice and she's wearing Dolce & Gabbana. When I saw this look, I was like, all right, let me start with the positives. And all I could come up with is that her makeup looks amazing. She's got a very beautiful face. I don't really love the hair. I'll be honest, I don't know if that's her signature thing. I didn't really care for it. It kind of looked very helmet-y like. But also this look is just, it just looks very cheap. It just looks cheaply made. And it, it's, I mean, it's flattering to her body. I guess that's a positive. And I do love, you know, sort of the top of it. But from the breast down, it just all looks very cheaply made. Like she got it at Walmart, you know what I mean? Like it's just the netting, I, I don't know. It all just feels very cheap. It looks like she's wearing like her regular panties that she wears on a Tuesday. I do like her nails and I'm gonna leave it at that. But that was why she is my number two least favorite in the ingenue category. 
My number one least favorite looks in the ingenue category is Sandra Huller in custom Scaparelli of Couture. And yeah, I just, let me start with a positive. She's a very pretty girl. The makeup is simple. I, I, I don't know that I like the hair. I think it's a little meh. And the jewelry is nice. That's it. The, the rest of it, I can't, like, okay, from the waist down, it's very simple. And I probably like the shoe. But this, I can't get behind that. I don't think it's flattering. That's really what it's about. I just don't think it's flattering to her. I don't know if, I don't know how to fix this. Actually, I was gonna say, maybe if you had a larger chest or a, th like, I don't know. I don't know. Like it's it's it it doesn't even frame her face in a flattering way. I just can't get behind it. And, and you know, if they custom made that for her and she loved it, bless her heart. But it just, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. And that's why she's my number one least favorite in the ingenue category. Now we're coming up to the category I'm calling Old Hollywood. Now again, just like in the ingenue category, some of these are very young ladies and should have maybe been in the ingenue category, but that put them more in the Old Hollywood because they're sort of like seasoned veterans at this point with red carpets and especially Oscar red carpet. So that's why I kind of fit them in there. All right, so let's start. My number six favorite look in the old Hollywood category was Demi Moore in Versace with Chopin jewelry. Look at this woman. I cannot believe it. I, I, she looks incredible. She doesn't look like she has aged in 30 years. Look at her face. It's absolutely beautiful. The makeup looks incredible. I love the earrings. I love her long dark hair. I mean, that's what she's known for. And especially up against this chocolate of the dress. Oh, so beautiful. The little neckline. Love the little points. It makes her body just look even more amazing. I love the little bit, you know, little cross bit detail across it going down to her belly button. The body is stunning. The clutch is amazing. The jewelry is perfection. It's very demi where it's very understated, you know, she doesn't wear a lot of diamonds and stuff like that. And it just goes into this very simple soft train vibe. Oh, it's just, she looks like chocolate heaven. Chocolate heaven. I absolutely love it. And that's why she is my number six in my favorites of the old Hollywood category. My number five favorite in the old Hollywood category is Emma Stone. There's no greater accessory than holding an Oscar, right? She just looks so happy and stunning. And I mean, I just love the simple hair. Her makeup is perfection, that alabaster skin with the nice little soft red lip. Oh my goodness. And I love the drape of the top of the dress. Then you get the sort of high-low uh, it's beautiful. The pie gets, the silverness. See the shoe in this photo? I'm sure it looked amazing. I didn't get to see her walk in interview, but I just love this photo of her. I believe she's wearing like a blue, yeah, like a soft blue sort of bralette underneath of the dress. And I mean, look at the mirror diamond details. It, it's beautiful. I love it. I, I just can't say enough about it. She looks amazing. Again, you can't go wrong when you're carrying an Oscar onto the red carpet, right? Absolutely stunning. That's why she's my number five. My number four is Zoe Deschanel and she's wearing Patu. Now what I loved about this look is that it didn't remind me of Zoe Deschanel. Like I had to do a double take when I saw it. She looks so beautiful in this look. I love her hair with the nice fringe and the bow in the back. The jewelry just works with the look. And I mean, the dress is stunning. 
I love a chevron. I think it's flattering on so many. And it's also not like snatched on her, which it just looks relaxed and easy. I love the two different fabrics. It looks like it's a velvet up against a silk. And then all of the all of the whip stitch sort of look is looks like crystals. I love the jewelry, the ring, the bracelet. And I also love this sort of train in the back. I just was blown away when I saw it. Oh, by the way, the top, the top, that little halter top is so beautiful. I literally had to do a double take because I didn't believe it was Zoe Deschanel. And that's why she's my number four favorite in the old Hollywood category. My number three favorite look in the old Hollywood category is Jessica Biel. And she's wearing Archive Donna Karen collection. I absolutely love this look on her. I am gravitating towards blue these days and this shade of blue on her skin tone is absolutely stunning. It's like a royal blue. Her hair I love. It's just classic Jessica Biel. The makeup looks perfection. Her face is so gorgeous. I love the sort of snake chain necklace that she's got going on. And I believe that it's Chopard. Oh, it's Tiffany and Company is the necklace. And it is actually a one sleeve dress. That long sleeve is just on one side. I love that simple draping on that one sleeve. It just billows down into this stunning skirt. And she just looks absolutely beautiful. Now I didn't miss mention Justin in the men's category, but he also looks absolutely amazing. He is wearing Fendi and also Tiffany jewelry. I love the brooch. I love the cut of the suit with the open vent on the side, the cut of the pants, the nice little shiny, but not quite patent leather shoe, sort of a loafer shoe. I absolutely love them as a couple. They look incredible. That is why Jessica Biel is my number three in the old Hollywood category. My number two favorite look in the old Hollywood category is Margot Robbie and she's wearing archival Mugler and Manolo Blahnik shoes. She looks stunning in this look. I absolutely love it, head to toe. The hair is just relaxed and easy. It's just, she's like, I'm done for the season. I'm gonna look my best as she's serving it. The makeup is makeuping. She looks stunning in that. I mean, oh my gosh, and the body. It's just a very simple corseted, beaded, corseted bodysuit, basically. And it's lovely. I love the little fringe hanging off the bottom of the hem. I love the draping of the cape that she decided to wear, the little over-the-shoulder moment. And the shoes are perfect with this look. She looks incredible. I have nothing negative to say about this look. She kept the jewelry simple. I don't even see any other jewels. She really made the Mugler piece the star of the look. And she looks incredible. I absolutely love it. That's why she's my number two. My number one favorite look in the old Hollywood category is obviously America Ferrera. She looked amazing at the Vanity Fair event. I absolutely love this look. She's wearing Versace. It fits her to perfection. I love that it's slightly oversized. She just looks comfortable and relaxed. The hair, oh my God, I love the hair. And the makeup, oh my God. She just looks beautiful. That face is stunning. I love the simple sort of wreath diamond necklace. I love the beading on the jacket with the nice wide satin lapel. Simple one button closure. It looks like she's wearing a little skirt underneath or I'm not sure if it's a split in the jacket. Either way, she looks beautiful. I love that she paired it with the black stocking and those shoes. Oh my gosh, she just looks incredible. Absolutely, hands down, one of my favorite looks of the night. Before I get to my least favorite looks of the night, I do have to give a quick shout out to Pamela Anderson. She looked beautiful in that Oscar de la Renta. I love that she's going no makeup these days. She just looks so happy. She looks the happiest that she's looked in years. 
Do I love the look? Do I love the dress? Not crazy about it, but you know, it is very simple and she just looks beautiful. I'm also going to mention in my top looks for the old Hollywood category is Michelle Yeoh. The only reason why she's not in the top is because she's wearing Balenciaga and I don't talk about them here on my channel. And if you don't know why, I'll leave you some links in the description box. But I do think she looks absolutely stunning in this look. Her hair and makeup are absolutely beautiful. I love the brooch that she's wearing and that's all I'm gonna say about it because I don't want to give any more attention to that brand. I do have my absolute hands down favorite look of the night but I'm gonna do my least favorites first and top it off with my hands down favorite look. Now my number four favorite look in the old Hollywood category is Sandra O. Oh. I wasn't a massive fan of this look. She is wearing Neem Khan and Brioni Raymond. I just didn't think it fit her well. I think her hair and makeup look stunning. I love the earrings. I just wasn't a crazy fan of the look. I do love the large paillettes down at the bottom and I do love her shoes, but for me, it just didn't fit her well, sort of like in that middle area. I think it could have been fit a little better, and if it was, it may have made it higher up on my list. But Sandra O, oh, unfortunately, just didn't make the cut. Number three least favorite look in the old Hollywood category is Selma Blair, and she's wearing Sebastian Gunawan and Graziella jewelry. I just wasn't a fan. First of all, I had to do a double take. I didn't even recognize that it was Selma Blair. I do love her hair and makeup. I think she looks stunning. That makeup is unbelievable. And I do love the jewelry. Outside of that, not a huge fan of the dress. It just isn't working for me. I think it could have been a lot more flattering to her body. I think that kind of middle area just is wonky and weird it just doesn't look real it doesn't look snatched and it doesn't look relaxed it just kind of looks out of shape i don't know i do love the material of the dress and outside of that yeah the little bralette top not a big fan but i do think that she looks beautiful from the neck up <laughs> my number two least favorite in the old hollywood category is Paris Hilton and she's wearing Sabrina Belenko, I believe is the way that you pronounce that. As usual, I'm gonna try to start with the positives. I do love her hair and makeup. I think she does look very classic Paris Hilton, very beautiful red carpet Paris Hilton. I am just not a massive fan of the dress and I don't like it with the gloves. I know that they're all supposed to go, but it just looks very expensive Renaissance fair. Does that make sense? <laughs> like it looks expensive can-can, I, I don't know. I do love the bodice. I, I do love sort of the neckline. I think it's really about the shoulder embellishments into the gloves that's really throwing me. I think without that, it would have been a much more successful look. I also think that the choker necklace is a little over the top. I think that maybe if she had just sort of paired it back, taken off the necklace, taken off the gloves, this would have been a much more successful look because I do like the dress, certain parts of the dress. And I think that the shoes actually work really well with it. It just wasn't my favorite, that's all. And that's why she's my number two least favorite in the old Hollywood category. Before I get to my least favorite in the old Hollywood category, I do have some honorable mentions. Serena Williams in Off-White. Now, I know Serena's a fashion girly and she has her own aesthetic. This just was not one of my favorite looks of hers. I don't know what it is about it. I just wasn't crazy about it. I think her hair and makeup is stunning. I mean, her makeup is flawless. And I do love the necklace and the earrings. The rest of it, I just can't get behind. And I think it has to do with like the very top of the dress is sort of puffy. And I think that that was kind of throwing me off. 
And I also don't think that it's that flattering to her body. I mean, her body is sick. But, you know, I mean, I know she had a baby and all that, but I think that she just could have done better. It just wasn't my favorite look. Next honorable mention is Tracy Ellis Roth in Balmain. And she's wearing Zygo Italy ring and L'Envan ring. I'm a Balmain girl. I love Balmain. I do think that her hair and makeup looks beautiful. She kept everything very simple, wanted the dress to shine. It's just not a flattering dress to me. And I've seen Balmain create better. I don't know what it looked like on the runway, but I'm just not a big fan. I do love the jewelry. Her smile is infectious. How do you not love this woman? The nails are even stunning. I just wasn't a big fan of the dress. That's all. And my last honorable mention was a little bit of clickbait. And that was Kim Kardashian. I'm not talking about Kardashian on my channel and also the fact that she's wearing Balenciaga. I thought the look was horrible. And that's all I'm gonna say. It, she just looks ridiculous. Uh, I hate the dress. I don't like her. I don't like Balenciaga. I don't like this look. And so that's all I'm gonna say. She looks awful. And I'm sorry, it was a little bit of clickbait, but yeah, she, uh, I hate it. The least favorite look in the old Hollywood category. She's not really old Hollywood, but she's been around for a while. And I just thought that Kelly Rowland, oh honey, I just couldn't get behind it. I'm sorry, she's wearing Nina Rishi and Masika jewelry. I can't. Let's start with the positives. Her hair and makeup, absolutely love it. Love the hair, the makeup is makeuping. She looks absolutely stunning. I absolutely love the jewelry and that's where it ends. <laughs> Obviously, it fits her body to perfection. I just can't. The gloves with the bows and the dip in the... It's all too much. Then she's got the fishnets with the overskirt. Like, she just wanted to throw it all in. She It's just throwing it all in. You know, she was kind of her first foray into the acting. She's getting a lot of accolades. She's doing a lot of more red carpets for her acting. I just don't know what she was thinking. I, I don't know what her stylist was thinking. Yeah, th it's not good. I just can't get behind it. I'm sorry, Kelly. I know this was your big moment in the sun for your first event season, but yeah, I just couldn't do it. I'm going to wrap up the video with my all-time favorite look of the night, and that is going to go to Yara Shahidi. Now, I know Jason Bolton was flipping out. If you don't know Jason Bolton, that's her stylist. I know he was flipping out when he saw her hit the carpet because she looked amazing. I love the hair. I love that she did sort of a big hair with the curls. Oh my God, that face is absolutely stunning. Her makeup is very soft and elegant. Love that she did like a very simple little hoop. Did I say who she's wearing? I'm sorry. So Yara is actually wearing Gucci and with the Cartier jewelry. And I mean, it's Gucci. <laughs> it's very Gucci, right? Look at this dress, the color against her skin tone. It fits her to perfection. I love the neckline, absolutely beautiful. The sequin is stunning. I love the fringe is stunning. I, it's stunning, it's stunning. Jason Bolton, you smashed this look, absolutely killed it. He's been working with Yara for years. He knows her body, he knows what looks good, he knows what's gonna work, and this works. I absolutely love it. It was my hands down, favorite look of the night. My number one favorite look was Yara Shahidi. And that was the last look of the video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. Again, I apologize that it came out a little bit later than I would like. Please make sure that you subscribe because I am going to be doing my Oscars favorites and least favorites as well as my Milan and Paris Fashion Week videos. I'm hoping to get those up as soon as possible. And I really look forward to seeing you all in my next video. And until next time, 
You better believe it. Bye.